Hey, Hey, Green Harry, talking to you live this crazy morning. Those just waking up. We have had some interesting events overnight. What seems to have built up in the Pennsylvania has kind of spread into the Ohio region and no word of what's going on. But many of these hospitals in the Pittsburgh area are basically overrun with sick people who have been attacked, injured. No word on how many is yet, but it it looks like a lot from what we're seeing here. If you are on social media, you should log in and check it out. I don't know how this wouldn't have national attention right now, but we're hearing little or nothing from anybody officially right now. So you have family in that area. Phone lines have been down for much of the night, and they're trying to contact police or literally anybody that represents to get a comment. has just been short of impossible. In fact, what we're seeing get this hashtag crazies uh, has been all over the internet with some pretty chilling videos and we piece this together right now it seems like Pennsylvania, Virginia North and South Carolina, Georgia Florida, much of the eastern part of the United States have all reported similar style attacks. We've heard word that maybe Alabama and Mississippi are having problems but it's at this point literally impossible to get any real answers through the haze of post graphic information on social media it's it's pretty crazy images so if you have a chance to check it out do so because people who are injured in ways i can't even describe without probably be taken off the air so what's going on we don't know people are just attacking other people like these guys really aren't even there in the head like they're gone Wait, I spoke to some professionals today, some doctors, and uh, they said, you know, drugs like PCP, angel dust, similar painkillers, that's the kind of thing they, they can do to people. Uh, people with obviously broken bones could just keep going under the effects of hardcore drugs, just not feeling any pain and in some pretty bad shape, which is, from what I'm looking for the images here, seems exactly... Well, what I would expect from that kind of influence. What's worse is we've heard something happening in maybe Columbus. An old couple were attacked and the cat tried to eat their dog. The word is Fluffy won't make it, but the two were able to escape before they say another person in a similar state showed up and began to chase them. They said they called authorities, but no word of what happened. It's the only case that we've heard of, but still, that's pretty frightening. And imagine punching someone and they just ignore it or hitting them with your umbrella. And just no effect whatsoever, which is, it seems like exactly what happened here. And the idea of just, you know, somebody crazy enough to actually eat a dog. What, what kind of crazy medication you have to be on for that to happen? It appears whatever chaos is happening elsewhere is minimal here. That's the way we'd like to keep it. After we spoke to law enforcement this morning, they say it's just common knowledge that if someone is acting strange, that you just avoid them. Which, you know, after he said it, he kind of sounded stupid. Then we didn't figure that out. Yeah, that sounds about right. You know, some person comes up to you and acting like a total buffoon, like maybe maybe just maybe avoiding the person in general would be the smart thing to do i don't know but uh I mean, you, you have these situations i guess under pressure you don't know how to act so but what's really strange about this is that we've heard nothing from any government officials whatsoever i mean you think that someone i have to address this maybe a solemn sorry for your loss we're ahead of it or that like, you know the kind of feel-good statement we're used to. Just you know, some warm fuzzies, a little pat on the back, you know? Get us get us in the right. But still, no, not a peep. Not even a, you know, anything about we're, we're on our way to discuss something or whatever. And I don't know if that's even in that area. Maybe there's something going on that we don't, we haven't heard of. But that's what I'm seeing right now. And that's what I'm paying attention to. So, see, this, this is what I'm talking about with all the experimenting. People always are so excited about science. It's the next big thing you... You, you know what? I realize it. Science stinks. Think, think of it this way. 
You know, this was probably somebody in the lab, someplace, a la Walter White, cook, cooking up their next big batch. Just imagine it for a second. Take yourself there. They're, they're doing this next big thing, and they've got this new wonder drug. It's, it's going to make people just have the high of their life. They, they're going to be happy. They're finally going to find a way to sweep all those problems under the table and instead what this guy made is probably synthetic rabies like you take it and it makes you go completely bonkers like you're just out of your head and for some people that's kind of stuff that they're looking for but imagine it just you know, wipes your brain like some kind of eraser on a chalkboard and suddenly there's, there's no you anymore you know this guy's handing out to people in a club somewhere and voila, voila, the apocalypse, man. Just the instant drunk of like one afternoon in the club and it's over. The rest of the world is just, it's just spread. You know what I mean? Like a third of the population. I forgot what, what it was from that other one. But uh, yeah, what's that movie? I think it was. Oh yeah, I Am Legend. You know, people forget in the first one it was like vampires, like the first film. But was it some, yeah, it was some drug they took. And then in this last movie with Will Smith, I know, I remember it saying it was a cure for cancer. So, yeah, so sure, you, you cured cancer, but it turned out everybody's now nuts. But uh, unable to walk in the sunlight. And next, they're hunting by scent, probably detecting people by their heat. and can follow you anywhere you go, you know, just by scent. You can't hide once the sun goes down. And in a couple of days, there's hundreds of them. And like one of us, like one of us makes it to the end without getting sick or is somehow immune to it. How crazy would that be, right? I mean, you can laugh, but think about it. That's, that's how it happens. I mean, look. So I'm looking at this post here. This guy says he shot the other guy and literally nothing happened. It looks like here you probably shot the guy five times and the guy just will not go down. You, you can't tell me that that's not the same thing. It's either, it's got to be drugs or some sort of super virus that cures cancer, right? It's got to be. It's got to be some guy who just thought he was smarter than everybody else. And he, here he comes. He's going to cure cancer. He's got this. And you know what? You guys don't have cancer anymore. But you're just psychos. You've lost it. Now you're nothing but some dude that gets shot five times and doesn't even feel it. Now imagine... Now imagine some of these old good old boys down there, they get together, they start doling out personal justice, and now you got a real problem on your hands. Vigilante justice is no joke. These guys do not take anything lying down, if you will. It's kind of horrifying if you think about it. I mean, that's, seriously, that's, that's how the fabric of society unravels in real time, right there. You first think you're curing cancer or you're making everybody happy, and suddenly society doesn't exist anymore. Civilization ends as you know it. We, today we were driving nice cars and surfing the internet, and tomorrow we're eating on pots and pans, you know, out there hunting for our next meal because the world's falling apart. Thankfully, we haven't seen any of that as yet. Like, you, you never know if it's going to happen, right? I mean, let, think about it this way, okay? If it's going to happen, it's going to start in a city. That's where it's going to happen. Places where people are compacted together in ways that you just cannot understand on top of each other. You really can't get away. It's it's where probably people come into contact with each other the most. I mean, think about the irony of that. A connected world that says we need to unplug and get back together just to find out that getting back together is what's going to kill us. And the more separated we are, the better. <laughs> How crazy would that be? And, and it's ironic just we push ourselves so much to be you know organizations that stick together and then we end up sitting around watching TV all day and then we tell people go out hey get with each other and then we finally get with each other and we're kind of punished for doing the right thing if you will it's just kind of crazy uh, I mean, <laughs> you can imagine you should have less picnics and stay home playing video games more wouldn't it that would be a riot. I, I really would have been the best ironic statement anybody's ever made 
in the world, I would just, I, he'd just make it all worthwhile just to have that in our lives. But uh, yeah, I did hear about some of these, what's called a ham operator. I, I don't know if you guys, if you guys still use radios out there, like not radios, like you listening to me right now, but stuff like you, you know, these amateur guys, amateur radio operators, the guys have these, these networks of folks like truckers that have CB radios. They all start talking to each other. And I would love to monitor that or just have someone monitor it and tell us what they were talking about. Because these guys, they're ready to go. They have these go bags. They have these things that they are ready to go at a moment's notice. They have their generators. These guys, something bad happens. They pack up their bags, close down their, batten down their hatches, you know, run away for like six, seven miles from where they live and they die out in the woods for like three to six months. They get all their rations and all their stuff in their bags and then when they make it out there, they're like, hey, we're good. We're just gonna stay out here to let you guys kill each other and then once we're done, we'll come back and then pick up the pieces and, you know, go through everybody's house probably and you take all their cool stuff. But yeah, <laughs> that's how it works, man. It's crazy and that's, I'd love to know where they're sitting right now because I know this seems bad, and I don't want to say anything bad about them, but you really want to find out who the rats are in the world. In other words, when the ship is about to sink, you want to know who the rats are, because that's the people that you want to follow. Like, oh, those dudes are fleeing? We got to get with them, because they know what's going on. And you know, in any of these situations, there's always that person that has, like, a perfect angle on things. They know how to, like... And that's the trick, just avoiding the problem. If you know what I mean? Like, there's a lot of stuff out there that gobbles people up. But if you can just learn to avoid the problems, you're the guy. Like, everybody always tells me that. You should be the strongest guy in the room. Well, how do you be strong against some dude that just doesn't feel anything, right? It just doesn't work. But if you're the dude that knows how to avoid the strong guy and the problem dude all in one place you're the guy that makes out because you're not even part of the equation anymore you're you're someplace else you're not even in it you're you're way off six miles down the road eating a bag of like one of these government ration packets that's made with hot water and basically eating goldfish and you're good like these other two guys are fighting it out. Nobody, no, those, neither of those guys make it, right? They're the guys that get in a fight. The problem dude, he doesn't care if he gets hurt or not. The guy that's the good guy, the tough guy, he gets in the battle. And at the end of the day, he gets hurt too bad. The other guy gets hurt, but he doesn't care because that's what he did. And those guys kill each other. They zero out. But the one dude sitting in the back of his have some log cabin in some place at the end of the world that's the dude that lives right that's the goo that makes it and I think that's crazy but it's true and that's the thing is is that to, to, to put it better that's the dude that's the rat on the ship and that's the dude you need to follow that's the guy that has this all figured out so it looks like law enforcement in the area here is saying that everything is completely under control uh, but that, that does not look like control to me that looks like a problem they mobilized our police. They said they're dealing with it. Uh, oh, yeah, you can sleep easy. You know, even if you're living on the Pennsylvania border right now, where all this stuff is going on, you you rest up. Because these dudes, doesn't matter. They Even though they don't cross the border, they got it all under control. They're all working together, apparently, to do whatever they need to do. I, I don't, you know, I don't know... But from what I'm seeing online, I don't see the control here. What I am seeing from the images, it looks like a lot of people, and it looks like a lot of people were bitten. And like, you know what? Let's say that. Let's say people are bitten. If they if they are bitten, how do we know that this isn't some kind of rare virus or that's how it's spread? In other words, that's where it comes from. Don't no, nobody seems to be talking about that, but look at this this is this is connective tissue here this is 
one side over here that's kind of got it figured out, they think, and one side over here. And in reality, we came back to that thing, is everybody's kind of being reactionary. They're not getting ahead of the problem. They're just kind of waiting for the castle to fall. I mean, there's some people like us that are sitting back in the back and looking at it going, hey, you know what? They're all saying the same thing. If it was a virus or bacteria, which I didn't even think about until now, there has to be some sort of communication. Like you, you get up, you get a cold, you start sneezing, you have a runny nose, there's stuff that's going on. You see that. That's why everything has a flu-like symptom because that's how it's spread. And if this is something, I don't see where anybody has a way of spreading it. There's no sneezing going on or something like that. Maybe this that's how the communication happens. Maybe that's how it's spread. And, it, and who's to say that's not how it happens? Really? So, I mean, let's consider that for a moment. And it's, it's one thing that's kind of bugged me about, you know, people think about how easily viruses are spread. Like, think about that. You, you, you have something that happens and everybody goes, wow, it gets out of control really fast. And I'm like, yeah, it does. It gets really out of control really fast because we don't really think about it. So let's consider that. One person bites one person. So those two people bite another two people. I'm sure you heard this in like all the vampire stories and stuff. And then those four people bite another four people. If you do the math and let's say that happens every day, how long have you got? So I think of it as the folding page thing. Remember they say that as a kid, your teacher would have you fold a newspaper? Like, how many times could you fold it before you couldn't fold it anymore? And I think, if I remember right, that's seven times. You can't fold it more than seven times before you run out of folds. And it's the same concept of why, like, you know, pyramid schemes. You ever heard of that stuff? It doesn't, it doesn't work because seven levels in, and there comes a point when you're selling to people who are actually selling the product now. You're selling to yourself. It's a system that can't survive. I mean, I think that's why Yvonne failed or something like that. So we think about it that way. I, if I, we think about it right, I mean, that would be us being three or four days in, right? So suddenly it's happening so much that it's kind of hard to miss. So people are seeing it, and we're thinking about it. So if we think about per state, if we have two states being affected right now so the next thing would be four states being affected and the next would be eight states being affected how many days have we got right I mean there comes a point when seven is kind of the fold right or is it just I mean, it doesn't, I don't think it's going to work perfectly like that because math doesn't really especially when it comes to I'm going to use the word organic math I just made that up but if you think about it from that level of you know, nothing happens perfect when it comes to math. Like, there's probably going to be one dude that shows out there and says, I can't find anybody to bite today, you know? So that guy's out there hanging out, or, you know, he, another guy tripped and, you know, knocked his teeth out. So he's got nothing. You know, he's gnawing on people, but he's not really doing anything big. So there's a couple of dudes in there, if you think about hundreds, that, you know, are kind of dead dudes, you know? But as a total there's still a group of people that are going to start to just continue to mix it up over time. And that's just what happened. Now, I'm not saying that's what's happening. I tend to think that what's happening is really, you know, Johnny goes over and sells stuff to Mary, and, you know, Mary takes the stuff thinking, hey, it's the cure to make her happy, and, you know, it's the next big epidemic. You know, I think that's what's happening. I don't think it's a sickness per se, but a lot of people, they're saying sick. So, hey, what, what do I know, right? I'm just some dude on the radio who's talking whatever out my derriere, right? But it makes you wonder, doesn't it? I mean, if this happened out of the woods and a bunch of these guys got infected, you never know about it for days, right? They just show up in some swarm, and that'd be it. I mean, how do you stop that? You couldn't. No amount of cops could slow that down. You would just sink tons of bullets into these guys or hit them with whatever. They're just so messed up that they're not able to feel anything. 
and that I think is the craziest concept ever. Like, even if it's just a drug, there comes a point when you think, hey, there's a bunch of dudes out there that are taking this stuff, and you don't really realize how much of the population are affected by this. I mean, think about that. How many people are, I've never even looked that up before. Nobody's thought about that before. If you think about the current drug epidemics that we have, and I'm going to call it like that. I don't know if that's a logical thing to say, but it, it makes sense to me. How many, what percentage of people out there right now have got into something that they don't realize what they've gotten into? And let's let's mix the two together. Let's say it's a drug on top of uh, some kind of illness. Or let's say the drug has an illness in it. That's even a crazier mixture. Like, we're getting, we're getting all, all philosophical in here and all the stuff. Like, I'm using my brain pan for something. But, uh, yeah, if you put those two things together, think about how many people out there are addicted in some way, shape, or form. And they, they always say that they're going from one step ladder drug to another entry level. I forgot the wording for it, but... Like you start off with one it's gateway. So if you have this gateway of things, you start off smoking cigarettes, and then you start smoking cigarettes and drinking beer, and then you start smoking cigarettes and then drinking beer, and then playing pool because you know that's addictive. And then after that, <laughs> you went from playing pool to saying, you know what, I'm gonna try the worst drug I can possibly find. I know it doesn't happen. We skip some steps there. It, it, it's fine. Stick with me. But you go from playing pool to being a hardcore addict. And that's the thing is, is it's, it, it all it takes, right before, what was that? I think it was heroin. Yeah, that was the one that they talked about. So they were talking about the heroin thing. And they said, what is the, you know, you could take this stuff once. You take it once and that's it. It's over. Like you can easily get addicted to it. Now think about people that come back and say, you know, I don't think anybody that's doing marijuana. I don't think that's happening to them. Maybe I'm crazy about that, but I mean, I smoked cigarettes in the past. Do I feel like I was addicted? I don't know. I kind of quit cold turkey, but, you know, it, 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 I don't think that's good what everybody does, but I don't think, you know, smoking obviously has negative ramifications down the road. I didn't think it did originally, but I've seen people and the results of what smoking does, and I know that they have negative ramifications. But I think that, I think most people do underestimate their addictions per se. So if you have something like that and then you move it over to something else and then you have things that are kind of, I want to call it the safe stuff, you know what I mean? And then you get into like heavier stuff. And that's the stuff that kind of like pulls you in. Now you got something that makes you feel better or you have something that, I don't know, makes the, makes the bad things go away. And that's where I was talking to somebody that I think that's kind of a, the trick to it. Is people are, we, we live in a world of pain, right? People are finding a way to get away from that pain and find an escape. And the problem is, is sometimes those escapes are actually the problems. So they're going to make things more serious. So here we have somebody that picks something up, they get it, makes them happy, and then they've moved on to something else. And what if this is the something else? What if this is the next step that put them into a place where it wipes your mind clean? Now, I mean, that's really what it was, right? I mean, heroin is just something that takes away the pain, right? Just imagine a drug. And how many people would actually take that? That's crazy. They would take it and it would literally wipe away who they are completely. And there would be nothing left but this machine. And it's doing whatever it does or has done in the past. And it's just trying to get to that next level. Like trying to get to that next thing to keep itself alive. Like it's literally like a robot walking through space and time. Just existing. And that is pretty crazy, but... It's pretty hyperbolic. I mean, I'm sure nothing like that's going to happen, man. So, seriously, thank you guys for tuning in. To, let's get back to some music, and we will talk to you guys right after the race. This is a public service announcement provided by Civil Defense Initiative.
If you live within the affected zone, the following emergency information has been provided for your safety. At this time, you are asked to shelter in place. If you are required to leave your premises, it is important to avoid anyone you feel may be sick or does not respond to verbal instructions. Thank you for your attention. Stay tuned to this and emergency channels for further information as it becomes available. This has been an announcement from Civil Defense Initiative.